one of those days. This is not a planned video. I just felt like talking to someone. And so you're here. So why not? Let's talk. <laughs> I'm just having one of those days where everything makes me cry. I don't know. Maybe it's stress. Maybe it's stress. You have those days where every little thing just makes you cry. I'm not angry and nothing bad has happened. I just get so emotional. Um, I don't know. I mean, if you know me, you're probably like, what's new? What's new, Habiba? You're always crying anyway. You cry at a drop of a hat. Like I literally can watch a commercial and if it's emotional, I will start crying. I'm that person. So I'm, I come down, I'm trying to take a snack or get a snack. I decide to watch a little YouTube and I watched a video of this girl who's having her baby or she's planning to deliver. She's planning to have her kid and uh, they're going to the hospital and you watch them go through the labor and delivery. And she had packed all these baskets uh, to go to the hospital and she lives, I guess she lives in Alabama, but she's packed all these large baskets with all these um, snacks and goodies and like, cookies and and you know lotions and just different little things that she packed in the basket for the nurses she packed baskets for the uh, break room for the staff and i don't know just that simple gesture just had me in my feelings and i just started crying i just started crying like how sweet you know how how adorable and i know i mean i've worked in hospital settings all the time and Anyway, it just touched me how, you know, here she is preparing to go in labor, preparing to bring in this new being into the world. And she took the time and effort to put together all of these little gifts for the staff that would be taking care of her. It's just these little touches. When people do things like that, I just think, wow, humanity is not lost. So there's that. And then I happened to end up watching Gabe and Anna. Now, I don't know if you guys know Gabe and Anna, but they're a young couple. I think she's from Tanzania. He's from Ghana. And um, anyway, they're expecting a new baby. And I wasn't even watching that, but they have a video that went viral a couple of years ago. It's got like over 4.5 million views. You should definitely watch it. If you ever want to cry, if you ever want to watch the most beautiful African Western wedding of two beautiful people, uh, the title of the video is The Crying Groom. You should look it up, The Crying Groom. It is so beautiful. So anyway, I have just been bawling, just literally bawling. And this is not the first time I've watched that video. But the point is, I thought about my own wedding. I thought about all the people, the guests that came. Um, I thought about all the effort my grandparents put into the wedding. Um, you know, they really did their best to make sure that I had a beautiful wedding. It was very expensive. I know that they spent a ton of money. It was a beautiful wedding. And then I was thinking, I want to watch my wedding again. And I cannot find the tape. And I started crying. <laughs> I just started crying because I can't find the tape. And even if I found it, the truth is, even if I found that tape, it's a VHS, 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 I can't even speak, VHS tape. Um, it's been so long. You know, I got married like over, shit, how long have I been married? Anyway, it's been over 25 years. And even if I found that tape, I would have to have it converted. But the point is, I can't find that tape. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, and then I thought, well, where's my wedding albums? Where are my wedding albums? I can't find them. And it's, I was about to curse, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was about to curse and I know you guys are gonna come up here and go, here she is cursing. Cause I always get these comments when people hear me curse. I'm sorry, I curse sometimes. But I don't know where my wedding albums are. And um, I have, you know, I have copies of certain pictures. They're, they're photocopies and they're not good. But I have 
wedding albums and I know they're in boxes somewhere. That's the con of moving. When you move, sometimes you misplace things. But I just wanted to look at my wedding album and I, I don't see it. Anyway, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, and before you guys say, oh, menopause, it's menopause. No, it's not. I have always been this way. I've always been this way. Like, talk to me. Don't you have days where you just, just get emotional and you just cry for no reason? On top of the fact that I know I'm the type of person that I need the sun, right? I absolutely need the sun because when it starts to, that's the only thing about fall is that in the fall, we don't get a lot of sun and you start to feel moody and you just start to feel down where it's not, you know, it's not quite the holidays, but it's not summer. Um, anyway, before y'all think I'm crazy because I'm not, <laughs> before y'all really think something is wrong with me, let's change the subject a little bit. So, um, yeah, this is interesting. This just came out from the CDC that uh, this is now for U.S. residents. Um, uh, this is a report that just came out today, I believe, that there has been a lot of salmonella outbreaks, and I don't know, you guys might have heard about that. There have been a lot of salmonella outbreaks, but the recent salmonella outbreak has been tied to onions, specifically from Mexico. So they're saying that nobody or everybody should stop eating onions, red, white, yellow, whatever type of onions if they are from Mexico, you should discard them. Um, I know, right, that sounds crazy. It just seems to me of recent, every five minutes, they are, there's a salmonella outbreak. You really have to like pay attention and um, um, look out for where your food is coming from, which is why, I digress, but which is why my fantasy has always been to have like a homestead where I'm self-sufficient, where I live on a house, and there's enough land to grow my own food, to grow everything, because every five minutes, there's a problem with the food source. Um, and I know part of it obviously has to do with the pandemic because a lot of the food sources have changed. If you notice, a lot of the brands um, where you get your food from, some of them have changed. They're getting them from different sources, and sometimes those sources can get contaminated. So uh, pay attention to the news, pay attention, and also make sure you're really washing your food and your vegetables. Um, you know, I think fruits and vegetables, as we know, are very important. We should all eat our fruits and vegetables. But I also understand why a lot of ethnic people, um, not just Africans, but even Southerners, uh, don't eat a lot of vegetables because I think they're always worried about, you know, getting some kind of infection or getting some sort of, you know, parasitic infection or problem. So they tend to cook the hell out of their vegetables or grease the hell out of their vegetables because again, they're worried about getting sick. And I think it goes back to old times, but here we are modern times and people still get sick from foodborne illnesses. So if it's not salmonella, it's E. coli. Um, there are a lot of foodborne illnesses out there. So hopefully the next time I come on here, I'm smiling and I have my hair done. I need to do my hair. I've been procrastinating doing my hair. Uh, by the way, Kenton is actually in class, in case you're wondering. He's actually uh, in class because on Wednesdays, he has to actually be in class in the evening physically on campus. So yeah, so I'm not as worried as I used to be. Like in the beginning, like I guess last year, I used to be super worried, you know, with the whole pandemic doing in classes with other people. But I think we've all kind of gotten the hang of it. And he's very, very careful. He double masks, um, we're all vaccinated. Um, yeah, the children are vaccinated. As you have seen in the previous videos, they have actually been on campus. They've been on campus, they've taken breaks and come home. 
Um, none of us have gotten sick. Um, yeah, Khalid lives, you know, out of state. He's in Maryland. He's working. He's been home two or three times. And when we're in the house together as a family, we haven't been, obviously as a family, we don't wear a mask in the house. But I just thank God that we have all honestly been well. Um, I know I've gotten a ton of comments about, oh, you don't know what the future holds. Uh, you don't know, you know, the long-term effects of the vaccine. Um, and the truth is, yeah, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what the long-term vaccine, uh, you know, side effects or repercussions are, but who does? Sometimes you just have to trust the process. Uh, someone commented the other day that, um, you know, why are people getting, being so cautious to say they're not anti-vaxxers? Meaning like they'll start a statement saying, uh, I just don't trust the vaccine. I'm not going to take this vaccine, but I'm not an anti-vaxxer. And then someone is commenting like, why do we have to preface it by saying we're not an anti-vaxxer as if this is a bad thing? Well, I do believe saying you're an anti-vaxxer or that you're an anti-vaxxer in general is not necessarily the best thing or the thing to be proud of in my opinion but of course i am a physician so that's my point of view now obviously there are some who will disagree with me but uh the point is that i don't know how in today's age you could be an anti-vaxxer if you're living your life as a healthy individual and you were vaccinated against measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox. These are all required vaccines. Uh, measles, mumps, rubella, chicken pox, tetanus. I mean, all of us have taken that, have we not? I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you've taken that. So I don't know yet how people really could be in the pure sense anti-vaxxers. But I do know that there are people, little communities of people, even within the United States who don't vaccinate their children, but they live in these little isolated communities uh, where they don't mix with people. And maybe it works for them for a while, but when those children go up, grow up and have to mix in society, that's another problem. That is a big problem. Um, I'm pretty sure those children will have to, or those children now adults will eventually have to be vaccinated. So. I'm not telling you what to do with your life. I'm not telling you that you have to be vaccinated. That's your choice. Uh, it's up to you. But I am telling you that I am vaccinated, finally. Uh, I have been vaccinated, both, both vaccines. Uh, for those that were curious, I did not have any side effects. Uh, none of our children have. Kenton is fine. We're all doing well. And you know what? None of us really have 100% of the answers, but we're all trying to do the best we can to take care of our families and to take care of each other. So, um, and anyway, I don't know how I ended up on this tangent, but <sighs> goodbye. I don't want to say too much more. Goodbye. Have a great evening or have a great night or have a great day whenever you're watching this. Bye.